America is very similar to the EU nowadays, where you have a collection of entities that can govern themselves to a limited extent, but they're overseen by a massive uh, bureaucracy, which binds all of these governing entities together. And what really binds these entities together is the common market, the domestic market, uh, in the case of the US. And if that market were not so valuable, then the country itself would cease to exist. America today simply exists because of its gross domestic product. That's it. Just as the EU exists because of its common market. Uh, it's it's uh, <laughs> it, it simply has too valuable of a common market to fall apart, and the U.S. has too valuable of a GDP to fall apart. That is the bottom line. And uh, so, you know, America is not just going to collapse. That, however, what's happening is that the country no longer has a core of identity or a macro culture. It used to be sort of an Anglo-centric macro culture that had a pluralism from place to place, variations is what I'm saying, but it still was there. It used to be there as something people would assimilate to from sea to shining sea. But since the 1960s, that has been eroded. And now with wokeness, uh, obviously that sort of Anglo-centric macro culture is viewed by many as something demonic. So uh, we're, we're in a situation in the US where people do not feel fraternity with each other from place to place. Uh, they remain in the same country simply because of uh, the, the domestic market, which fuels the federal government. And that's really it. And I don't think that a country can truly be successful in projecting strength on the world stage if its people do not believe in the country itself. Uh, most Americans nowadays have no common cause to rally around. They, as I said before, there's no national core of identity and there's no uh, countrywide macro culture to build fraternity. So uh, while America is not going anywhere now, uh, it is rotting from within. And in several generations time, that could create a situation where there no longer is a U.S., but it's that marketplace, that domestic marketplace, which makes it so uh, likely to stick around for some time to come. But I don't think that America, cer I certainly don't think America is destined to be the world power. I think we're entering a multipolar world where there's going to be many more global powers and they'll have their own sphere of influence in different places and they'll be running things either literally or by proxy in these areas. I think it may be that the primary reason for the decline in national feeling and with the decline in communal feeling has nothing to do with wokeness or the left or even immigration. It may have to do with the growing individuation of lives. So we have increasing mm. specialties in professions. We have increasing specialties in recreation. So it used to be that a community would gather around its its church, for mm. example, that, that, that would that would be the primary source of emotional solace. So I'll just speak from a purely secular perspective for a minute. So the, the church or the synagogue or the, the mosque and, and organized religion would be the primary source of emotional comfort to people. And, and I think that was true until maybe midway through the 19th century. It also used to be true that, the, that your religion was the primary source of information that it would be transmitted through your church, synagogue, or mosque, and through, say, printing presses, or through the transmission of documents via, via monks or other people. And, and that's no longer true. So it used to be that the way to get status was to participate in your religion. And there was many volunteer opportunities for, for laity, in particular in Protestant Christianity, but in other religions as well, to gain status by participating in religion. And that's no longer true. Now people get status by holding a book club, by holding poetry readings, by organizing gaming, by being in the yacht club, by, by coaching Little League, by being in a sewing circle. There are so many different individual ways that people get status these days. They no longer need religion. There are so many different ways that people seek comfort these days. They no longer primarily turn to organized religion. Some people turn to marijuana. Some people turn to their favorite movies and TV shows. Other people turn to yoga. Uh, other people turn to a special diet, to a special exercise program, to special hobbies, to, to a social circle. There are just so many opportunities for comfort that are immediately uh, compelling and that many people, probably most people, find even more useful for providing emotional comfort than, than religion. So status, comfort, Information. There are so many places to get information now. You don't need to get it from, from your church or from your church-sanctioned information outlets. And so people increasingly lead all these individual lives. And so there has been a dramatic loss in common feeling 
And I think this took place before the 1960s. I'm thinking out loud that this primarily took place before the 1960s, before mass immigration, before the rise of cultural Marxism or wokeism or whatever you want to tell it. I think it may be inherent in the nature of modernity that we have a loss of common feeling, a diminishment of national feeling, a, a diminishment of, of common ties with people whom we live around, and, and then immigration and, and wokeism and, and some other things may exacerbate that. But it may be that modernity has, has changed the way people operate. And so I think we've had a steady decline in religiosity uh, over, over the past 150 years. And, and I think uh, with that, uh, with all these individuating processes of modernity, comes a loss of common feeling. And that hollows out a communal sense and also perhaps a national sense to some degree. I'm just thinking out loud, so I'll just leave it there. No, it's very, very worth much worth hearing. And I think there's more than uh, more than a few grains of truth in it, so to speak. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think there's a hell of a lot of truth in what you said. Uh, I, I do think, though, that even uh, what you said, uh, to the extent that I agree with it, uh, and, and I just have to reiterate, I do agree with it uh, quite a bit. But if one looks at America, it did have something of an identifiable macro culture, even in an age of modernity that began in the 19th century, as you mentioned, uh, it, it had an absolutely identifiable macro culture until the 1960s, but it certainly had one even after that. It was, it, it was withering away, but it was still there. As a matter of fact, uh, last night I was watching uh, rewatching. <laughs> it's been a while since I've seen it. Fast Times at Ridgemont High, which obviously is set in San Fernando Valley, a place Luke knows well. And it is, it, uh, it, it's about uh, high schoolers and their experiences. And the culture represented there is not what you see in the San Fernando Valley.